recording back up. All right, Bo. 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 <laughs> boy. We're ready to go, um, boy. 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 All right. So um, you see, see, you see a shocked Tedna in the bathroom. Sort of, he was he crouched in a corner with his legs up, you know, his knees up again. And he looks up at you, Hope, as you're the one to, to, to bolt back to the back and open the door. <laughs> you brush past Nash, who lifts his face off the floor, and is his, his blood. His, He's a blood beard, you know, from his nose. <laughs> and Bok Bok uh, tails behind you, Hope, uh, and also looks around the corner. And um, you see him there, and he goes, Please, don't be mad, don't be mad. I slam don't the door, mad. and I go back to the front, and I start, like I said, talking to Stanley about speed limit on the car. You don't go above 60. Who was and in the bathroom? You hear, you, hear cre- you hear a creaking of the door as he sort of peeks out. I'm I'm one two hundred percent invested in teaching Stanley how to drive. Okay, <laughs> Stanley, <laughs> you're being taught at two hundred percent more effect uh, intensity. Um. <laughs> All right, then I will I'll approach the bathroom and say that is not wise, and close the door slowly back. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking lizard, hilarious. big tall lizard. All right, you close the door and he stays in there. I Who is this boy? To learn. There's a human child that we did not. You weren't. Invite. You weren't here is for this bit. Tedna? Yeah, you weren't here for this bit, and uh, we better be careful because last time this or when this came down in camp, he wanted to go with us, and we got real close to seeing. Hope, pull her gun out and blow the kid's head off. She is the executioner. Can be. Perhaps we should engage the mouth of the group. Stanley. Stanley, the mouth. <laughs> Billings. Uh, <laughs> Stanley, yes. letting you to drive. I'm a, li- I'm a little focused right now. Is it? It's Tedna, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's a human boy, yes. I will I will open the door and I will assess him. His strength, his his look. So he, he's now sitting on the can, uh, not using it, just he's sitting on the toilet seat and um I will appraise of, him. He, he appears to have been playing, you know, with his fingers, just like lost of thought, and he looks up at you. And as soon as you open the door, he bolts up and he says I'm 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 here to help. Tell me what you want me to do. I'll do it. I'll Survival do it, check to see how strong he is. What is uh yeah like a human appraise? That's what I'm going for. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Is Thirteen. There... Mm. Okay. So um you get the sense that this is a this is a young uh young man. He's fit. Um for a human, uh, he appears to be fit. Uh, you see, you know, he's good, but not overly muscled or anything. Just sort of lean from lack of food probably in the camp. Um, you have no idea what his level of experience is, but you definitely seem to think his there's concerns about his judgment, given that he was told not to go, but then he came anyways. Although there is merit to his insistence on wanting to be a champion, and that is noted by you during your appraisal. Physically, it's difficult to tell. He has the appearance of someone who could hold his own, probably, for a young spry man, but um, the experience side of things, given that he's young, you would feel could be could be a liability. In humans in particular, they tend to be rash. Are you armed, boy? Um, he's wearing, sorry, before you, you, we continue, sorry, he's just, he's wearing a regular like, light beige jerkin and khaki pants, some old raggedy steel toe boots. Doesn't appear to be armed in any way. Um, Sorry, what? And your question was, are you... Are you armed, boy? Right. He says, uh, I, I, no, no, I'm not armed. I closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> but but you hear through the door, but um, I know how to use a gun. I can hold my own or, or, or sword. I can use a sword. Then you should have brought one. This boy uh, is unarmed. I, I, I didn't want to take anything from the camp. And, and, and I mean, I'm Why sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be mad happened? at me to the last human that traveled with us. Oh, yeah. He died in an arena. Are you aware that we are 
heroes of the wastes and will face many adversaries. Y yes, I am. I, I, I too want to be a hero. I want to be a hero of the waste. Describe how there's now a big hammer where his head used to be. Ah, yes, yes. He he ran in fear, and I'm saying this through the cracks in the little vents that you know. Unless it's a moon. Do we have a moon cut in the door? Or what's a? No, okay, it's yeah. Just that <laughs> people peeking in. <laughs> oh, I love that idea, though. It's, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> there a moon cut in the. <laughs> You must be brave. You must be very brave. Trust me, I can hold my own. I'm not scared of the oil beards or the silly orc leaders. I, I can hold my own. Varel, ask him if he's killed anyone. Have you killed anyone? I, I hurt a guy. I've hurt them. I haven't killed anyone yet. Have but, you but I will. hunted before? Have you killed an animal? Uh, it, it, well, sand squid. Uh, we've gone out with my dad to to to, to hunt sand squid before. Killed sand squids. And, and a, what, there was one time. Um, there, there was a, a, a land shark. And oh. He had me. He had me cornered. And and I was scared. And but I hold my ground, and the land shark it went away. Hmm. I. What, what's it? The... Sense motive or lying? He's lying. Okay. Surely. Uh, insight. Insight. Twelve. Mm, it seems there's a, there's a glorious lack of detail in this story that to explain this thing that doesn't happen very often that a land shark giving up his prey for no reason. You should remain quiet now for an extended period of time. <laughs> Hope is very angry. I can feel it. To tell her Radio. not to be mad. Tell her. Tell her. I just, I, I tell her. I just. I just want her to to, to make to, to make her proud that she, that I'm here with you and helping. Make you will find yourself walking if you speak any longer. I can assure you of that. If not worse. <laughs> you hear nothing else from the from the room. Perfect. He's gotten the message. All right. Well, Nash is on the floor still and goes. I'm laying like this. Because I'm not getting up till Stanley's done with driver's ed. So We're still going. It's a good pace. I'm laying there and Stanley's I go. Stanley's doing a great job. I go, we should just dump him off if we're not going to keep him. Um, you hear this voice echo out from outside the vehicle. Enemies of the realm in the vehicle. Again? Exit the vehicle now. Let's look around out the windows, oh. around the vehicle. Is there anything? Uh, you look ar around out the vehicle, and um, you look to the right where the door is that uh, people can get in and out of the RV. And you see a, a, a large seven-foot-tall metal man. You see a bunch of footsteps leading behind him for a little ways, and then not, nothing. And he appears to be standing aside. He's got a visor over his, his head, uh, so you can't see any face. It's brown. There's a few lights lighting up here and there. Um, there's a large. He's whole. He's, he has equipped with this large-looking rifle, very mechanical, um, but doesn't look like any gun you've ever seen before. And he's he's standing. He, the figure standing out there. Behind you us. have ten seconds to comply with my order. Stanley, stop the car. Oh, the car is stopped. He oh, break, okay. He braked it, and that's when all this mess happened. <laughs> is oh, it? Oh, uh, that's is he? Uh, yeah. Uh, you thought the car was going. It's because I have my feet on both pedals at the moment. Okay. <laughs> so, <just> <laughs> <going>. <laughs> so can uh, can we check somehow to see if this is the same metal man we route run the other day? Oh. Only Varel had visual. Uh, oh, right. Visual He's the only one that saw him. him. All right. Never mind. Hope it's I don't know man. how to stop the car. It's a metal It's man. all right, we're stopped. You did great, Stanley. <laughs> do I take my foot off the pedals? Yeah, and and, and then uh, I'll show you what to do with the key. Five seconds uh, remaining before I open me. fire. And I'll, I'll leave the vehicle. I'll kick open the door and I'll walk out with my shotgun on my shoulder. Kick open the door and walk out with a shotgun. And um, all right, and he's sitting there. 
The rest of them, too. You hit him. Send the boy out. No, ah. oh. leave him in. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go out. Yeah. All right, Nash exits the vehicle. Nope. Get unbuckled. Leave the car. You exit the vehicle. Exit with Bok Bok. All right, you and Bok Bok both exit the vehicle as well. You stand in the line before him. Uh, sorry, I have to get a note here. One second. Is it possible to ready an action at this point? Uh, you may, sure. If he makes any attempt to do anything aggressive towards the group, I am going to cast heat metal on his stupid metal head. Okay, so you're readying this action yeah. for when combat starts. If it starts. Okay. All right. The man surveys. He looks. Uh, uh, he says, "Now, please hold still for a moment." And then this uh, this little antenna sort of shoots out from one side of his power arm, and there's like this little eyeball, and you hear it's the eyeball. And then it unhooks, and the eyeball sort of floats in the air and it flies towards you. And it approaches, you hope. It's, it's before you. It doesn't look like an eyeball, but it has like these these weird lines that are running through this glass surface on one side of it. And then it moves to you, Lash, and Nash, and it goes, and it sort of moves back. And then it moves towards Stanley, does the same thing. And it moves towards Varel, and very quickly, I know I'm taking a long time to do all this, but it happens very quickly. And it looks at Bok Bok and it's like, and Bok Bok can't help himself. He, he's like, ah, he goes to swat it. And he hits it. He knocks it on the ground and Bok Bok's like, and he starts pulling a stick of dynamite out of his, out of his pants. You've done it now, I yell. And the metal man says, please tell your friend to desist. Or I guess I'm, you guys are in the same room now. Please tell the little gruntling to desist. This is an insult. You summon some sort of observing eyes while hiding your own? This is dishonorable. No, I am the epitome of honor. I am here to ensure the land is cleansed of any foul demonic energies. And I find that three of you among you are guilty of demonic intercourse. Yeah. Says Nash of the Solar Mines. I'm point at my horns and kind of shrug. You are to be sentenced to death. Please step forward. And he points to you, Hope, you, Stanley, and you, Nash. Step forward and kneel and prepare for a clean death. I cannot allow this. I am their protector, their jailer. And I will see that they are redeemed for their deeds. We are to destroy the principle. And they have made terrible choices for power that Did will give them. Did you just lie? Hmm? Did you just lie? Oh, I actually believe that. I am uh, the enforcer of the deal. You're the jailer. Okay, okay, then no need to. But but lie. you can make, because jailer's a bit of a strong word. Yeah, that's why I asked. I was like, is, is he trying to be Stanley? I was like, <laughs> they're my prisoners. Um, okay, so he says, you dine to kill the principle, the only thing which protects this world, and you're all enemies. Then you are a fool. You will die at the hand of I, Sir Renko, of the umbilical order of paladins. And his power armor starts to, uh, starts to glow. And then these energy, these, this, this yellow energy uh, wings start to fire off behind him. As they form up, and his power armor begins to just glow. Um, combat is starting, uh, so he hasn't done anything aggressive yet. But there's basically a standoff happening right now. 
I then mean, this shall be glorious. So are you going to cast your spell, Stanley, or am I gonna, are we going to roll for initiative? I'm going to cast it, but I'll cast it at his chest instead of his head. All right, so let's roll for initiative. 11. Uh, 11. 11 for Stanley, 11 for Nash. 7. 4. Four for um, Hope and seven for Varel. Yep. Okay. Bok Bok rolls a five. Ring. Okay. Um, so Stanley, he's about to do something aggressive, so cast your heat metal. All right. Uh, oh, he's wearing it. It just hits. Um... Okay, there's no constitution set. Like it, it just works, right? It just heats the metal? Uh, yeah, well, hold on. Let me find the exact spell here. Uh, heat metal. Any creature in physical contact with the object just takes damage. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. So he's going to take 2d6 damage? Uh, 2d8. Okay. Uh, which is fine. Because <laughs> it was not a okay. good roll. <laughs> perfect. Okay, so immediately the, the armor begins to glow, and you, you see it, you see it start begin to glow like even brighter, this red, and you hear a, from beside the, the visor. Arr! Okay, so now the metal's heated, and it appears to begin cooking him. <laughs> All right, he gets to go first. He immediately jumps into action as soon as he casts that spell. He puts his hand out, his largest, large metal brown metallic hand, and the fist. Uh, he opens up his hand to be open an open palm and it decouples from his arms and the wrist fires out at you Stanley for your face and attempts to grapple you uh, so can we make a grapple sure uh, that's going to be an 18 save oh no uh, so is it dex or athletics it's dex okay so that's going to be actually a 20 for a save because it's a saving throw right yeah. All right. So the, the hand is basically, it looks like it's coming straight for your face to just grip you in your face and you duck out of the way and the hand, the hand rockets past you and it grabs on to the, to the fate four and is like, Ugh. and then with, an, with another, um, so with that having been done, he immediately springs into action and a rocket pack from his back, a large giant uh, jet of rocket comes up and he flies straight into Varel uh, in an attempt to knock you over. Um, so I need a strength. Is a shove strength contest? One second. It's not. It's not a grapple. It's a shove. Let's find DM screen. Do, 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 do. I lost my DM screen. Oh no! It's on the floor. Sorry guys. I just want to see what the shove thing is. Shoving action. Special attack. Uh, it doesn't say on here. That's weird. You make an athletics check contested by athletics or it's dexterity. Athletic. The target chooses oh, the ability. So say, same as grapple. Okay, so he attempts yep. to shove you prone. All right, let's do it. Cool. 23. 22. You're shoved to the ground. He, his, his giant armor flies right into you. Boom! And you just feel this hard metal as it just, just smacks you right down onto the ground and you're prone. And then he raises up a foot and he puts it on your chest and, and holds you into the ground. And you read, read. All right. It's now Stanley's turn. Uh, okay. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to continue the heat metal to burn him. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be 12 points of damage. Okay. And... Hold on. Does it say... I guess it doesn't use a spell to do that. It's just a bonus action additional to it. Yeah, so uh, you... you... It's currently in the process of being heated. In order to do damage, use your bonus action to pulse it, causing damage, basically. Okay, so I'll do that, and then um, I will look at him and lift up the megaphone and uh, 
just yell through it. Are you beginning to feel the burn then? And have that be a vicious mockery. Okay. Uh, it's a save, right? Constitution? Uh, or... It is a wisdom. wisdom save. 15. All right. It fails. He takes the damage and he has disadvantage. Three damage on top of that. Three damage. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, do you have any movement? You're sort of all still standing in the line. Uh, he's, yeah. He's, I wanna... he's, he's amongst you. Uh, Holding Varel down. Is it within range of an opportunity attack if I move? No. Uh, I'm going to go and duck behind the front of the car. Okay. Uh, as you go to duck behind the front of the car, you hear the engine rev up. Oh. It begins to take off. Well, then... So, so you're trying to run up and you're trying to do that. <laughs> that little piece of shit! I hate Can this I kid! Can I grab onto the car? <clears throat> you're out of actions for the turn. Oh, crap. Bye, car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye, car. Uh, so you're you're stuck on the open desert. Nash, it's your turn. All right. Um. You have a still have a blood beard. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to. Um, I'm going to shrink him to half his size. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And uh, let me pick it up. Here we go. Nash only likes to fight tiny opponents. Well, <laughs> it's just, if he's holding Varel down, I think this is a great way for Varel to get up. Is my thinking. Um, no, I, I'm with you. I just like that, that <laughs> you like to shrink people. Yeah. I don't think it affects their strength or anything, does it? I'm I thought sure. it did. I thought it halved everything. Or did some kind of cut, didn't it? No, it doesn't, it's not that, it's not that um, blanketing. Um, I mean, I don't actually don't know. I don't think we've used it offensively to shrink anything except the Beholder, which sort of had a really... No, we did use it that one no, time. No, enlarge or reduce. Okay. I um, but I'm, I don't remember what it does. Okay, I reduce. Think, the I definitely think it reduces their damage. Okay, sure. it says here, uh, the target size is halved in all dimensions and its weight uh, is reduced up to one-eighth of normal. This reduction increases its size, by a or its size or shrinking by a category from medium to small. Uh, blah blah blah. It says the target also has disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving flow throws. Cool. Uh, the target we uh, target's weapons also shrink to match its new size. While these weapons are reduced, the target's attacks with them deal one d4 less damage. This can reduce the damage below one. Or this this does help the, the grappling, the Varel grappling. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do it. All right. Uh, I I go. Wichita Hacker Walker, or whatever I say when I do these things, and boom, I throw it at him, and it's like, oh shit, I've been hit with a thing. So now and he is half. Here, as, his shy, as his size shrinks down by half, and he sort of looks like a halfling now. A halfling in, in this like powered metallic armor. Uh, and it's sort of, you feel yourself beginning to loosen uh, uh, Varela as he shrinks down. Uh, are you moving anywhere using any bonus actions? Uh, is there anywhere to sort of. Hmm. Can't visualize it, so I'll just I'll say. I mean, am I near Stanley? How close am I to Stanley? Uh, Stanley ran towards the vehicle that's driving off, so you're not close to him. Um, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna. I mean, just to keep in character, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna look over my shoulder and go, "Oh my gosh, the car!" And I'm gonna run toward where Stanley ran. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are both running after the car with my red, um, my red blood Varel, beard. It's your turn. Yeah. Cool. I will. Um, I'm basically just gonna grab the leg and turn my head sideways and good. Get the car. I will handle this, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you're breaking your you're breaking your disadvantage uh, the grapple right now, or are you re grappling? I am continuing the grapple. I'm going to enter my rage okay. as well. So, we, so for you to be the controller, we have to roll. Um, We'll have to roll a grapple contest. Cool. Let us do it then. Is uh, his one. little dune buggy there with him? Right? No. You said that was there, or there's he no just, dune, just there's beat. no dune buggy. There's no dune buggy. Twenty three. Yes, he, he might have used his rocket pack. Um, uh, I rolled a one. Sweet. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so you well then. Complete... Then I would like to, okay, so if I, if he's on me and standing on me with one leg, I'd like to do kind of a, a scissory kick where I've got his leg in between my whole body and with my legs on top of them. So I'm just okay. ripped. I just want to rip the whole power leg off. 
Oh, okay. You've, 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 you've basically wrapped your legs around his one leg and also part of his chest. Like it's yes, but he's small now, so like he's basically pressed the, under my buttocks. The, like the pinning move they do in UFC, <laughs> I guess. All yeah. Or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, and you're trying to rip his leg off. Yeah. Okay. The power leg off. I'm, I'm just gonna start. I'm trying to like strip this guy. Yep. So roll roll an attack roll for the pull. Okay. Uh, this will be reckless. Yeah. Twenty three. Okay, um, nice. and so uh, roll unarmed or improvised weapons uh, damage. Six. Uh, ten. Okay, so you, you pull a bit and you hear ah from the visor ah as, as you and you feel like you feel sin you snap you haven't pulled the leg off but you're making progress. Awesome. <laughs> you, feel, you feel progress in the flesh. And I will do the electric shock through my body into his. Okay, it's a save, right? Yep, 13. Okay, the electric shock goes through as electricity and it overflow, overloads like the lights on there and they go as you shock him. Five damage. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, okay, uh, so Bok Bok's turn. Bok Bok reaches into his pants and gets dynamite. He lights it. He, he runs He runs up. He's like, ah! And he, run, he runs up and he sort of he takes the dynamite and he sticks it in the, like, there's a little opening uh, between chinks of armor. He sort of sticks it in there and he puts his hands over his ears <laughs> and he runs off into the open desert. <laughs> uh, that's his turn. Uh, the, the dynamite's now... Uh, <laughs> the dynamite's now lit and going off. That's and, amazing. I can't wait. Um, uh, okay. All right. So yeah. Um, yep. Uh, Hope. Where do you? Fa oh, you're, you're, it's your turn now. All right. I'll yell to Pharrell. Pharrell, get out of there now! And then I'll back up thirty feet and I'll take aim. I won't fire yet, but he's got a jetpack, so I want to be backing up behind him so that if Pharrell gets out, I can light up his jetpack and hopefully pop it. Okay, you're gonna try and take out his jetpack when he uses it. You're readying an action. Uh, once Varel's out of there, because I'd like to explode the jetpack. Okay. I'm assuming there's still fuel. Okay, so you want to shoot the jetpack the moment Varel has let go. Yes. So I'm readying okay. that action. Got it. Um, all right. Is are you moving anywhere? You also have bonus action available. I've uh, backed up thirty okay. feet just so I'm sure. clear. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's it. I'm ready. All right. Um, so uh, the car now, um, the car sort of drives off uh, as all, all this happens. And um, and it, it spins around. You see it sort of spin around. Oh, no. and the, the car spins around to face uh, directly in its sights, Varel and the power armor guy. And you just hear Ted, Ted is in there. He's going, don't worry, guys, I got this. And you hear, run, 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 run. He's revving up, waiting to presumably ram the power armor guy with the truck. And he ready's that. All right. Ranko, the guy with the, the power armor, the paladin, he, he leans up and he looks towards you. And he just says, hold on, foul demon. And the rocket pack goes up. Uh, so, so um, Varel, as you're gripping him, you haven't let go. He, he rockets straight up into the air. And so you, you both fly up about 60 feet. Like, he can't move because he's grappled, but his jetpack appears to just operate at will. And so you, you now both, they, you, you guys see Varel and the Metal Man rocket way up into the air, and there's this, there's this stream of gray smoke. And it sort of clouds your vision for a second as you guys both fly up into the air. And then he takes his arm that no longer has a fist on it, and you see a, a giant, like, it looks like a there's... It starts to light up. There's this big hole, and it goes as he fires into your face. Jeez, what do you've gone 120 feet? If he was big, if he was 23. Big. Bo? 23 versus my armor versus my face. Yeah, it's a hit. It's a hit. Okay, so um, there's this uh, a giant. <laughs> Uh, a rocket flies out, hits you point blank, but because it doesn't get much trajectory, it just bludgeons you. Okay, so it hits you in the face like his missile. Boink, dunks you in the head cool. for um, 14 points of damage. Sweet, it, so since it's bludgeoning, bludgeoning, not explosive. 
Awesome yeah, setup. Bludgeoning. It bunks you and then it tumbles down past you and starts, it falls 30 feet. Right now there's a giant missile, presumably with some ordnance in it, uh, 30 feet above everyone else. There's a, there's a rocket. There's a, <laughs> a rocket that hasn't exploded. Yeah, but it's half you. the size that it would have been, right? Yeah. Okay, I just oh, so, want, I just, oh, when this comes we, up sorry. around the fire, I want everyone to remember who did, who shrunk it. No, no, no you're, you're right. <laughs> Actually, sorry, that damage I gave you is wrong. Um, it's 1d4 less, so let me, okay, it's 13, not 14. Cool, so still 7. Yeah, and um, and yeah, he makes it, then, then um, uh, he attempts to shoot you with the rocket, and then, uh, sorry, uh, as you're grappling him, these two, there's these two sort of like, you didn't really notice them until now, until they flipped open. But on his shoulder, where his shoulder things are, there's these two like, looks like plastic coverings, like Tupperware top containers. And they flip open, blink, blink on both sides. And these two rats run out. And they start, they start scrambling down his, his <laughs> good lord. These two rats start scrambling down and start attacking your eyes. They, they run across your legs and they try to get at your face. They start attacking your eyes to try and make you let go. I love it. Um, this is some Obi-Wan Kenobi spaceship level gadget all mixed all right. up in there. So, so, so one of the rats runs forward and he immediately loses his grip and falls. I rolled a one. So the attack. Oh, no. <laughs> so now there's, there's a rat in a rock. These are half size rats, right? The other one, uh, 14 doesn't hit you, right? Uh, no, no. Okay, so the other rat runs up to one of your eyeballs and he's like on top of your head and he's like, he's trying to, you, you can feel his tongue and you feel his teeth sort of scrape, but he hasn't, it's hard to bite into you between your scales, your protective armor. He doesn't get it yet. But you now have a rat on your face trying to eat your eyeball and you're floating 60 feet above the air. Um, Stanley, it's your turn. All right, uh, let's do this. So I'm there's a, going. There's a, a rocket falling from the sky, and there's I'm a sticking... going to move <laughs> and a rat. <laughs> I'm going to move directly underneath where they went up, so that theoretically so di directly underneath the, the the rocket as well. Yes, so okay. that theoretically puts me within sixty feet of him and thirty feet of the rocket, right? Sure. Yeah. Let's say that. So I am going to send Mage Hand out to catch the rocket and just hold it in place from falling. Yeah. Okay, um, so I just want to find out, because uh, it might be diff it's a difficult catch. Is it, it doesn't just, like we have to do a check for that, right? Even if it's your mage hand? I don't know, it doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, but to do a feat of something, it's, you know, tough, right? I'm gonna have to assign a difficulty to it. Um, I'm just wondering, does mage hand affect that in any way? I guess is my question. Or is no. it just like, it's like your hand, but not on your body. Yeah, it's just like, an that, extension it's of as me. if it's an, Okay, so um, I'll need you to roll a sleight of hand check for the ability to catch this sucker. Jeez. Well, that's all right. That's going to be a 23. All right, you sort of catch it, but you don't force your way. You, you, your hand drops and you catch it with it so as not to create an impact, right? Right. So the mage hand goes up to meet it then and now you have it in your hand you've got the rocket in your hand in uh, your mage hand all right and let's see um it appears at the point that i choose within range mm -hmm. and i can then move it 30 feet away okay so i'm going to just move it 30 feet out from okay so you said you said you send it out to a safe direction that where yeah. if it explodes, it won't explode near anybody. Yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. And then because I am 60 feet within Dude Man, uh, let's keep that armor heated. Okay. And we'll flare that again. The right. old toaster. Uh, but it's not it very burns, effective. It burns Pharrell as well. Oh, well, shit. Damage. Two damage. I rolled double okay. ones. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. But for, because Pharrell's grappling the heated metal, Varel also takes uh, two points of damage. Got it. Um, okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, that's my turn. Nash. Uh, okay. She hasn't done her opportunity attack yet because he's still holding Varel, right? Do I have that right? Varel's, about hol Varel's holding him. Okay, so until he separates, hope. I'm trying yeah, to combo. He gets an opportunity attack. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to combo here, but it's not going to work. 
All right. Um, Unless something crazy happens that, you know, would prevent him from doing that. I don't know what you have in mind, so. The bomb is falling? Actually, because he's, 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 if he's grappled, I don't think he gets to have opportunity attacks while he's grappled. Is Where's the bomb in our... Uh, 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 where's the bomb? Like, how close to impact? It's 30 feet away in a safe direction from Stanley, so probably like 40 or 50 feet away from you. Yeah, we've removed it from the... So it's field. no longer a factor, really. Yeah. Unless it's a nuke, and then we're all dead anyway. Yeah. yeah. So the Varel's up in the air, grappling the half-sized paladin and power armor. Um, there's a rat on Varel's face. Is the rat capable of hurting him? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try to put the guy in the suit to sleep. Okay, okay what's the range on sleep? Just to give him a, to give Varel an advantage. Range is 90 feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um. So he's going to be <laughs> he's going to be 50% and asleep here. That's the plan. Uh, okay, one second. Let me just you gotta you gotta roll dice for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just. Yeah. So roll your dice. Okay. Here for... we go. I mean, I have to I have to roll for hit first, right? No, there's no hit. You roll the amount of hit dice. Remember the way this works. Oh, you center it on an area, right. and the person with the least amount of hit points uses up the hit points. For sleeping, which means Varel, if Varel has less hit points than the, than the power armor guy, Varel will be put to sleep. We don't know how many hit points the power armor guy has. Or the the rat might be put to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I forgot about the rat. Yeah. Unfortunately, like I'll be honest with you, sleep's a bit of a rough spell if there's a bunch of friendlies or unintended targets in the area you're shooting it in. I knew it was a risk um, with Varel, but I didn't think about the rat. The rat as well. Yeah. Because the rat's just going to be automatic. Doesn't the pool move from... There's, still, there's, a, there's a second rat falling where the rocket was. There's a second rat falling as well. Oh, right. Oh, is it falling? There's two rats. One rat is attacking Varel's eye. The other one slipped off and he's falling. And he's falling how many feet? <laughs> uh, 60 feet. 60 feet. I mean, that may be enough to kill him. He, if he that, probably was He's probably just going <laughs> to die. He's going to die. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. About it. But you might put him to sleep. It might use up your I'm not, sleep. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he asleep before he hit the ground. Yeah. No. Um, but, uh, can I, yeah. Uh, is it too late? Have I already committed? No, no. You're not. We're we're we're, we're just right. answering some questions about you know <laughs> things your character would know about whether a spell would work or not. As it we hope you, his character would know. I well, don't know. I I mean, look. If it works, he'll make quick work of that thing and hopes thing will go off and we're done. But I didn't think about... Oh, wait, about... I didn't tell you to roll the dice, though. I don't know. I'll give it to you, but yeah. All right, firebolt. I'm going to firebolt the... I'm going okay. to uh, be awesome with this firebolt, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit that rat right in the right off his face. Okay, you're aiming for the rat? <laughs> yeah. Perfect, roll the tech dice. Okay. <laughs> Deep 10. All right. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Uh, wrong dice. Uh, eight, ten, there we go. Okay. Shit! Zero. Oh, no, that's ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, attack dice. It's a d20, my friend. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, right. No, but I have to do... Okay, forget the d10. I'm sorry. <laughs> if this hits, though, get ready for ten damage, everybody. <laughs> Double shit! Two! Okay. So fire the firebolt up into the air and it whizzes past. Gosh dang it! <laughs> Alright, my final action is to go, Oops! And that's it. <laughs> Alright, uh, Varel, it's your turn. Alright. I want to, uh, T Rex, snap my head sideways. Arc, Kind of like I'm, you know, I'm eating the, I'm gonna eat the rat. I wanna eat the rat. With my hungry jaws. Okay. So, bonus action, attack the rat. 21. All right, you, you get to get your, your mouth on it. Uh, you, sort of, you sort of shake your head a little bit, and it falls a bit into your jaw, enough for you to get a bite on that guy. All right, 10 points of damage. Okay. Um, 
you, okay, so you bite it, your teeth sink into it, and you hear a squeal as it just is, you know, you, you fully almost, you don't quite tear it in two, but your teeth are far enough that you can feel one tooth grind against the other. Um, and then you just saw your teeth a little bit and you get that spinal cord cut in two and then the top half flies off oh. and starts falling down. And awesome. You got, the bo- you got the bottom half of the rat, you know, the butt uh, in your mouth. <laughs> I started eating that and gained my three temporary hit points from Hungry Guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and, start chewing on it. All right, so am I am I upside down? Am I holding on to this guy by the legs? Yeah, still? yeah, the, the rocket is propelling you up. It hasn't stopped. It's just as far as you've gotten on the turn. So you're in the process of flying up and you have you have him grappled by the leg. Okay. And you, and you ate a rat butt. I'm going to make myself do an insight if that's cool. Because I don't yeah, know if I'm... I understood what Hope said to me. Because I've been busy. So I think that's the best way to handle it. What did Hope say to you? Sorry. Hope was yelling at me something about something, and then there's like a, a something sparking at his neck or something that Varel, you know. You do see the dynamite. Okay, you so I know what di- you know what dynamite does. You've seen it in Slave Town. Okay. You know it's a it's a blowy. Fresh, <laughs> fresh blowy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fresh blowy. <laughs> the one, the one time I saw it, it took about three rounds, but okay. Well, then I will. Um... I mean, Bok Bok could have said it to any number of rounds as he chooses. It yeah, depends how long it fuses. It looks pretty close. I will say. Okay, then I will. So I've got a hold of the leg. Then I'll look down. I'll see Stanley directly below me, and I'll let go. Okay. Perfect. As a reaction, as he comes down, I will cast Feather Fall on him. All right. Um, so I want to give you... him time to get away from Metal Man, but I will cast that as he gets close. All right. He lets go. Uh, you, 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 let, uh, <laughs> you let go of the Metal Man and fall maybe about 30 feet before uh, Stanley sees it, and he casts his spell. Make sure to expand your spell slot. And you start falling very gently towards the ground. But you miss, and you hit the rat! No, no. Well, I was going to get to that. I was like, but the rat's underneath you, so as soon as you hit the ground, you'll crush it. No the second rat. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, cool. So and then I'll use my standard to... Yeah, because the free action, let go. Bonus action, eat the rat, let go. I want to use my... I want to prepare a push-off if he comes around at me because the dynamite. Oh, you haven't used your main action yet, right? Right. Correct. So, sorry, you want to ready a push off if he decides to re-engage you basically yeah so basically i'm fallen and i got my legs ready and you know like a, a kid in the pool gonna push away from him if he comes at me with a grapple okay so you've ready to uh, uh okay a kick away got it cool all right um hope your turn cool and now can i start with the reaction shot first and then take the normal turn um, so the condition happening didn't happen, so no, okay. you don't. You just, you just, you just lose it, and you're now next to your next, and your next turn. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I will stand where I am and take aim. I'll walk uh, ten feet closer, just so he's within range of my shotgun, and I'll take a shot at him at the jetpack with a okay. thirteen. Okay. All right. Um, with a thirteen, so you take your, you take your shot. Flies wide as he ah. continues spiraling upwards. I'll curse and demonic, and I'll use my uh, my uh, oh, what's my what is it called? My extra attack that I have. Where are you? Oh, your um, action well, surge, I think. Yes, Bonus. action oh. surge. Thank you. Yeah. I'll try again. This time with a better, uh, with a nineteen. With a nineteen. Okay, this time it hits. Roll right, damage perfect. dice. So seventeen damage. Ooh, holy shit! Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, so um, the bullet hits, and you see uh, uh, looks like something, some sort of strange liquid. You assume sort of oil, but it's uh, it's kind of bluish in nature. 
um, sort of glows blue, it begins sort of pumping out of the side of the power armor. <laughs> you see sort of squirts. And as it hits him, it, it knocks him, so he sort of spins in a, it, it, he starts twirling as he flies up. Um, but you don't get an immediate reaction like he's falling to the ground. Okay, awesome. And then I'll turn and I'll look at the car and I will make eye contact with Tedna. Okay, and he takes his hands off. He's like, (laughs) he takes his hands off the steering wheel. He's like, and and he reacts to you in that way. Like he just, you know, he's desisting basically. He gives you that look like he was just trying to help. (laughs) Um, All right, Uh, so um, the man of the power armor begins to fly up and then he writes himself as he's sort of twirling he's he takes back and then with his free hand um he he unsheaths there's like this sort of revolver looking thing from it he unsheaths it and he begins firing down um at the ground uh firing at you hope he takes one shot at you and misses um but where it hits like this it's a large this large circle of white light emanates from the gun and it and it whizzes past your head and hits the ground. You just hear a small mini explosion behind you. And then he takes his gun and he tries to shoot at um, uh, Varel. And it, it also flies by his his white like light fires past and hits the ground in a mini explosion. And he doesn't appear to have noticed a stick of dynamite, which then erupts in his head. Um, Wait, it went shots. off. It went off in his head. Yeah, it goes off. So he just he fired down a couple of shots, and then the stick of dynamite just went. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> um, so let me find out where where are you, Buck Buck? I like three copies of Nash's character sheet open for some reason. <laughs> I watch Nash. Yeah. Why? Uh, you keep your eyes on Nash. He's up to stuff. <laughs> I don't trust that guy. Uh, yeah. Putting you all to sleep. Sorry, I just forgot to remember what explosives do. Um, equipment, dynamite. All right, each creature within five feet of that point must make a DC 12 or take 3d6 bludgeoning damage. So DC 12, that fails. All right, so the dynamite explodes. Um, I just want to see if it pushes them. It doesn't push them. So it just explodes in his head. You see this, you see this massive explosion. A few pieces of metal come off. Bing, 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 bing. As, and it explodes in his face. He's sort of twirling up in the air at the moment. Um, Tedna, uh, then you're looking at him, Hope. Tedna gets up from the vehicle, walks out, and just sort of you know brushes off his sweaty brow and looks up and goes, wow. As he looks at that power armor guy up in the sky. Uh, Stanley, your turn. Uh, how far away is he from me now? Uh, I mean, he's about... Um, he would have continued flying up as he made his shot, so he's about 120 feet up in the air. All right, I'm going to point my fingers at him and fire an Eldritch Blast at him. Okay. I'm not going to hit him. (laughs) Okay, so just fires wide as he's quite distant up in the air. Um, Anything else that you want to do? I'm going to... I mean, he's falling slowly. I don't know if there's anything I can really do to actually catch Varel, so I'm going to just gingerly step out from underneath him and let Good gravity idea. do yeah, what it yeah. does. Alright, perfect. Nash, your turn. Uh, another firebolt, please. Okay, side roll. Of, side of fries. You can reach 120 feet, I think, with firebolt, so you're good. That's better. 18. Okay, it's a hit. Okay. Damage will be... 1d10? Yeah. Uh, it will be... Nine. Okay. Um, so the firebolt flies up in the air, and just it, you hear a dunk as it hits him right in the face. Sweet. And he sort of flies back, and he begins careening out of control and flying off to the right, starting to make a descent as you hit him uh, in the face. Nice. Sweet. Okay. Varel, you're now floating down. Cool. Am I floating for my entire action? Uh, no, I mean you, you'll you'll reach the ground uh, oh, okay. in time to use all of your in time to use all of your abilities. So you slowly f- uh, float down, and you feel the ground beneath your well, you feel the ground on your back. So you're actually prone because you fell with your feet up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, how far away? So he is now 
the metal man fl- is the metal man is careening through the air, having been hit with the fireball, sort of flopping around at about 120 feet up. He's quite far up. Okay, looking like he's going down or still he's start, in flight. He's starting, to, he's starting to direct himself down and off to the to the right side. Okay, how but far away is the car? About 60 feet. Okay, so uh, without any anything to attack, my rage subsides. I hit the ground and I'll do a yeah, I'll do a, a dash action to the car. I'm gonna throw it open. I'm gonna grab the jetpack out. Okay, perfect. Uh, and that'll so be my whole action. Oh, I see. We have to use an action to get the extended range because you have to get up. Right. Okay. So and I got to get up. I got to run, 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 and throw open yeah. the door. And I assume maybe right. I got my hands on the jetpack. You've got the dwarven jetpack on. Uh, I hope it's your turn. Bok Bok's still. You see. Uh, by the way, we haven't been doing Bok Bok. Bok Bok hid behind a rock, and now he just goes. He goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just here cheering from from the side. I uh, hope it's your turn. All right. I'm gonna dash back to the car. And as I get to it, I'll tell Tedna to get in, sit down, and shut up. And then I'll get in the driver's seat and I'll start <laughs> driving to where Stanley and Nash and Bok Bok are. Okay. I don't okay. know if this can all happen in one turn, but that's yeah, I think I think so. I think you tell him to get in. He gets in. He just he's complicit. Uh, you get in. You throw open. I guess your action would be starting up the car, and then you hit the gas and drive near uh, Stanley and Nash. Yeah. It's a tough cookie, that hope. Yelling to get in. All right. Um, uh, okay, so that's hope. so now the, the, the metal, uh, you, you hear like metal begin to like, and the fist that, that had punched and attempted to grab Stanley uh, decouples and rockets back towards its owner. Uh, now, in in the air, the, the, the metal man, um, he writes himself and he begins again, he brings up his rocket arm and he attempts to fire a rocket at the Fate 4. Jeez, going for the car, man. Not cool. Um, so he hits the vehicle. Uh, you see pew, as he sort of flies in and, and fires into the rocket. Uh, fires the rocket into the top of the vehicle. It explodes in the top. I need everyone to roll a uh, dexterity saving throw, please. It's an 18 for me. 18. It is a whoever's in the sorry whoever's in the vehicle. Stanley oh, isn't in the. Vehicle. I'm not in the, vehicle. in the vehicle. Hope. Um, good because I c- good because I rolled a two. <laughs> Tedna and Varel, are you you're in the vehicle? Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, okay. Dexterity save. Sixteen. Okay, so um, you both save Is that that. Uh, sorry, what was your roll again? Hope. I just, I missed it. Okay, so you both save. Tedna does not, however, and so he's sort of standing around, and the rocket lands in, and it just he takes the brunt of the force and it bashes him against the side of the vehicle, and um, yeah, he takes about eighteen points of damage, and he just hits the wall and slides down and sort of falls unconscious. And there's sort of shrapnel and cuts in his face as as, as the top of the roof, the rocket hits the top of the roof, and sort of puts this hole open in the top of the roof. There's this gaping area. There's a bunch of smoke and detritus as your, your vehicle's damaged. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, it is now... Uh, oh, the rats are dead. Uh, so, Stanley, your turn. Uh, all right. So, the vehicle's coming towards us. Um, I assume that's going to get us to the metal man sooner. Uh, is he within 120 feet, or he's now further away than that? Uh, I mean, no, he he was in within range to fire at you, so you can fire back with 120 feet of range. Uh, but if I wanted to, like, grab onto the car as it's going by, that would be an action, right? That I would have to ready? Um, using one thing is a free action, but as soon as you have to do two items or do a thing with it, it's an action. So... So if you were to... Sp- if you were to grab, there's handles on on the Fate Four. If you were to grab a handle and just hang off the vehicle, I'd say free action okay. as it drives by. If you that's... take two hands to climb into the vehicle, that's an action. I would like to hang from the side of the vehicle, and I would like to fire Eldritch Blast again at him. Okay, so you jump onto the side of the vehicle, you fire an Eldritch Blast out. Roll your attack. Roll. 
Oh, that's better. Uh, that's going to be a 19 to hit. Okay. And roll the damage dice. That's 10. Okay, 10. Um, you fire an Eldritch Blast there, and it hits him again, just sort of in the chest, and the magic, the magic lands on it and begins to corrupt the armor. As, as, you, as you see that it hits and he looks he goes ah and he starts rocketing now straight down towards the ground and so a little ways off you just hear as he hits whoosh, hits the ground <laughs> it takes some fall damage here um okay. I picture it like a balloon that's been the air is coming out of it and it's just he, he, he flies out of the ground and hits the ground <laughs> Nash, it's your turn. Can I see him now? Uh, he's over at Dune, where he landed. Okay. Uh, I'd like to... How, how far is that? How many feet? Uh, you'd have to get in the vehicle. He's about 180 feet. All right, I'm going to get in the car then. All right, climb around in the car. Yeah. Um, Bok Bok, uh, he, Bok Bok sort of runs, but he's really far away from the car. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you want to go pick him up. We're going to sort of move to free action. Combat turns are over. So the, the, the Nash hops into the vehicle. Bok Bok's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. he starts running towards the vehicle to get picked up. Hope, uh, your decision. Um, I'm going to keep driving to where the metal man is, but as we're okay. driving, I'm going <laughs> to call back Stanley, the kid, please. And I'll keep driving. All right, I'm gonna. So you see, slumped in the corner, uh, uh, Tedna is just full of shrapnel cuts, and he's unconscious in the corner. I got it. For D and D speak, he's below zero hit points. I gotta touch him to heal him. I can. Am I able to climb in, or am I just stuck to the side? We're of the free, car we're, right we're not in combat action uh, turns anymore. So okay. what do you want to do? Yeah, so I'll climb. I'll clamber over there and cast cure wounds at level one on him. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and that will be. D8 plus 5. Oh, he's the lucky one. He got uh, 13 hit points back. Okay. So you be, his, his wounds begin to recuperate and he begin, the color begins to uh, you know, face color begins to enter into his face. He sort of uh, but he still lights out. He doesn't rise from his unconsciousness. But he's, That'll he's be enough here. to keep him alive at least. Which is lucky for him. Thank you. I'll keep driving. Right, How far so back drive is Bok uh, I mean, he's, you know, several hundred feet now. He's on the horizon. <laughs> you see, he'll catch up. Meet um, us over the dune, Bok Bok. Ah, no, 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 no. He's like, no, leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. We won't. His, his mind, all his mind is filled with panic. You can tell <laughs> it's very hard to talk with him. He's, <laughs> don't leave, don't leave. Um, and uh, you approach the area where um, the paladin came down. So there's a small little mini crater in the side of a dune as you crest to the other side, and you see him sort of his armor's just like he's like seated into it, hands hands on either side out, legs out, visor covered so you can't see any face, motionless. The armor on the front has been um, melted open by the eldritch blast. There's this blackness to it. <clears throat> and you see, like, it's hard to tell whether it was the Eldritch Blast or it's just the way it's made, but the flesh of the man appears to be embedded, like, in the metal. Like, it's just, they're not separate. There's this sort of weird in the opening. There's this weird, like, it's hard to tell where exactly the line is where flesh begins and where metal ends. Um, and he's not, like, cut open, but you just see some, some flesh and it's very, it looks kind of melted and old. As if, as if the flesh itself was made of, of some liquid. I will be prepared to use the Dwarven rocket pack to pursue if yeah. they attempt to jet off. And I'll pull up near the body, stop the car, turn it off, and walk out. Go check it out, make sure he's dead. Okay, as you sort of cautiously get closer, you hear a little... <clears throat> I'll smile. <laughs> Pull out my machine. You smile? Was that necessary? It's not dead yet. That's good. <laughs> That's good. It's just funny. I like how you're like, oh, he's alive. I'm happy. 
And then you, see, you do see notice movement of the chest as breathing is happening. He's still alive! No, I'll hold back. If you guys have anything to say, say it now. I'm still in the car taking care of Tedna. Oh! Okay. Uh, yeah, the mouth. I might need a mouth. Can he... Well, I guess I can try. Uh, can he? Uh, can you speak? I say to the guy. <laughs> what you hear in response? I turn around and go. He can breathe, but he's not talking. What do you guys want to do? Right, I'm heading up to the group. Okay, there's flesh exposed, right? Yes. All right. Finally, as as Stanley approaches, I would like to arm across Hope a little bit. Not not like a full blown like yeah. we're not doing like a a clothesline, but kind of out diagonal and wait. Stanley must interrogate. You shall have the kill. I'll nod. All right, I will walk over. <sighs> kneel down in front of him are you able to hear and understand can you nod at the very least I hear you sinner um, how were you able to find us <laughs> now the talks. paladins of the umbilical order have means to find those with demonic taint trail led me to you what you found in that hole you brought with you and you pervert our land with it how I many will not more be the last oh well, good you were proactive on answering that one uh, how many <laughs> more of their order are you are there? It is not about how many, but that we will be reborn. And then from his shoulder, you just hear a little boonk, and this thing fires up into the air, small. It's like a little sort of thing opens up in the corner, and just something fires up into the air. You don't know what. It's barely perceptible. Can I basketball splat it? It's it's tiny. It's like oh. it's tiny. It, it <laughs> fires up. It rockets up super quick before you can. Okay. And then as it as as it flies up, you see a flash. There's this white flash. Everyone's like it, eyes are like. It's a flare. Says you know, Nash. <laughs> oh, wait. More that what? will come for you. Why does your order serve the principle? <laughs> We serve not the principle. But you said if we oppose him, we're your enemies. Why would that be? We expunge demonic. The demons are our enemies. They betrayed us many millennia ago. And our order is here to preserve and protect our world from them. Warrior, your order has held this land hostage for too long. We intend to destroy the principle, destroy the demons that follow, and bring balance back. Your mission will be completed by us. You may rest now. You are a fool to think that, that you are a fool to think that killing the principle would aid would aid our order in protecting this world from the demons. <laughs> You've brought them into our land, and you poison the very air we breathe with it. Your dying breaths only speak weakness. You better hurry up, then. And you shame yourself on this battlefield. <laughs> Rest, warrior. Don't let him die. Varel? Be silent. Best of I'm luck to you. Push past Varel with my machete out, and I'm going to go for the exposed skin, and I'm going to carve in demonic alphabet like a CP for Katopa Praise. Okay. 
And he, you hear him go, You may desecrate my body, but I will be honored in the heavens. Your acts are meaningless, demon. I spit on him and then walk away. <laughs> I lean it's over. Like Can I, I need to lean over to Stanley and go, like, Stanley, hold on a second. How come he answered you, but he wouldn't say sorry. shit when I talked to him? Uh, a, a little detail that I forgot to mention is that his visor does come up during all of this. Oh. oh. That explains oh. it. I, I meant to say that. It's face. important. Yeah, exactly. He's putting like his visor. It comes up, and you see a man, pink fleshed. and But his skin looks like it's, like it's, it's pulled and hooked into the metal. Like there's all this. It's like. You know, it's hard. It, it looks like he's not in armor, but that the armor is grafted into his skin from what you can see in the metal. Anyways, he exposed his face and said all those things. I just sort of retconning that a little all bit right, in there. Well, so when you spit, talking? it lands in his mouth and he's like, ah. <laughs> Hope enough of your marks end him. You will. You will suffer once your master collects your all right, souls. All right, then I'll take my machete into you his will. mouth. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> he good, uh, pretty quickly. good at first. Yeah. He was into uh, it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sound someone makes when a machete goes in their mouth. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's more like <laughs> refreshing. And you, you let you put the machete in and you twist and turn and blood comes up and there's this convulsing like <coughs> as he chokes and suffocates while also being stabbed and losing blood and eventually you, you feel the body the tension in the body you know that that feeling when the body goes limp you feel it and then you start to hear a you hear need a, to go Deep. oh he's, shit that's not good. No, that's self-destruct. Fuck, fuck to the car. So everyone runs. Yeah. Um, Dashes, far... jumps. Yeah. <laughs> so how far can you get in like 10 seconds or five seconds? 60 feet from it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would imagine we could do our dashing action. So yeah, 60 feet. Is okay. he still half um, the size he used to be or did he come back to his normal size? Came back to his normal size because your spell lasts a minute, and we got out of combat. Okay, so he did regrow into his normal size as all he right. fell in. Sorry, I did miss that detail. No, it's but... a bigger bomb then, so that's yeah. all I'm worried about. Um, uh, do, 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 he blows up. <laughs> He's giant. Like this is. It's not a giant mushroom cloud because usually those are really giant. <laughs> so it's a miss mini mushroom cloud. It's a little like. <laughs> Uh, explodes in that area and sort of sucks up all the sand and shoots it up into the air and um, the Fate 4 falls over it sort of flies up and <laughs> falls down onto its side and everyone just barely jumps out it's got a dexterity save from everybody natural 20 18 can I slow walk? 22 <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay you can slow walk if you want I got so a everyone... four, dude. A four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone, uh, so Varel ducks for the sands. Stanley ducks for the sands. The Fate Four lifts up and falls over onto its side. Bok Bok turbos his way down. He just keeps running. He, re he just got there. He just ran in and, they blow, and he's running back. And um, uh, Hope is walking all like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, uh, <laughs> Nash flies up into the air <laughs> and gets thrown uh, several uh, dozen feet and takes a bit of all damage as he is. <laughs> my dexterity throws this today are terrible. Right, my dexterity take, rolls. Uh, 14 points of damage. Holy shit! <laughs> The only damage Nash has taken today has been from us. <laughs> he, he flies through the air and just hit the ground and just roll and, and just yeah, you hit your head on the stone as you roll and it's like and you're like ah, you just hear nothing but swearing coming out of Nash. Yeah, every damage point I've taken this entire encounter, failed throws or failed rolls, it's killing me. Literally. Yeah. It's literally slowly Eventually, a bunch of, a big wave of sand falls down on top of everybody. <laughs> and there's smoke and you smell charred flesh in the air. And, and sulfur. Stick my head up out of the sand. Buck, buck! Buck, buck! 
you hear it from distance off. Uh, like a little head pops out of a sand mound and it's like, nah, 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 nah. get myself out and go pull him out of the sand. Does anyone else require exhuming? I'm good. I'm good. Just I'm not good, actually. Out of the sand. I'm not good at all. I'll go help Nash up. <laughs> Nash, are you all right? Not really. I've had a rough one. Well, come on. Let's get the car righted and let's get out of here. The boy. We can check on him. Where is the boy? In the car? <laughs> the the Fate 4 car. is tipped over on its side right now. Yeah. Let's go push it I'll back, Varel. You're big. Well, Before let's we check it over. on Tedna. He was in the car when I left. He was doing better, but let's make sure he's okay. Yeah. Now you climb into the vehicle and you sort of find him sh pretzel shaped on the other, on the bottom side, up against the cupboards. Doesn't appear to be dead. Seems to be breathing, but is still unconscious. Yeah, I'll put an right. arm around my shoulder and work him toward the door. Or actually, no, there's the back door there, so I'll kick open the back and kind of... Okay, kick, and take him out? All right. Yeah. So you, you sort of take out his limp body and throw him on the ground. All right. Okay. I'll strength check the car. <laughs> okay. Is it just you? Is anyone else helping? I'll, I'll help. I'll help. Yeah. yeah I'll all help. Right. So every, everyone roll a strength check. No, wait, maybe box I box. don't want to help. I'm 11 hit points. You know what? You all do it. <laughs> you rest, Nash. I don't want something like, ah, uh, tips over and crushes your freaking leg and... Like Why it. don't you shrink the car, we'll ride it, and then it'll grow back in a minute. I could shrink it. Yeah, you know what? That's not going to hurt me. Let's do that. I'm shrinking the car to half its size, Bo. All right. You shrink the it's a good thing you took the guy out of it. I'll say that. We would have killed him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We took uh, him out, right? Is there anything else we need to take out? No, it just, uh, it's just like living objects, mostly. Okay. Right. But we'll say the car. You shrink the car down. Um, to half its size, so it's still heavy-ish, but it's not a full ton. It's half its weight, so I still need everyone to roll to lift it up. Nineteen. Twenty-two. Seventeen. You guys go. I'm good. Uh, and Bok Bok -Bok also rolls. Okay. And he, as he pushes up, he lets that little fart. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, you you, you ride the vehicle again. The vehicle gets pushed up. Urgh, effort and. But, you know, it's not as hard as you, it, it's lighter than you would expect because of half of its size. You push the Fate 4 back up on, onto its um, wheels. There's a hole in the top of the roof that's still there, um, blown open on the top left of the vehicle. But you, can't fit, the in the, you can't fit in the door. Well, the hole right now, being half the size it would be, it's about 20 feet in diameter. Wait, it's not okay. 20 feet. Sorry, 10 oh. feet in diameter. So the, the whole roof is gone. Whoa. But a large yeah. portion of it's gone. The roof is gone. It's like a little. You still have the windshield and everything. It's but, a little um, Bok Bok car sort of, now. It's the his. top left, the driver's side? Yeah. Okay. I just go, give it a minute. <laughs> All right. A minute elapses and the car returns to its normal shape. Check on Ted then. Your metal. Okay, Tedna's on the ground, like. Tedna. And yeah, as you go, how are you? What are you doing to check on him? I, I'm just. <laughs> you, just you just shake him violently. <laughs> 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 I know this is very emotional for Hope. This is, she doesn't know what to do. You're going. Eh, eh. <laughs> 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 uh, you okay? Uh, uh. All right, so you go to you go to grab him and just look at him and 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 look him over just to make sure he's okay and, and as he slowly comes into conscious and then he doesn't know where he is and then his eyes meet yours and he smiles and he says did we do it i'll smile back yeah we did it and he just he just sort of stares at you and smiles and who's we and, and then and then he he says you're so beautiful <laughs> And then, he, and then and then and then he sort of fades out and back into unconsciousness. Let's get him back in the car. Well done, heroes of the waste. That was a fine first performance. Hope a little long on the death, but well done. I I think he's got a sh he's taking a shine to you, Hope. 
the, yeah, b- the boy. Well. He demonstrated bravery, and he could operate the motor vehicle. He's got to go back. We can't he keep really him. He got himself killed. We can't keep him, Burrell. <laughs> we can't keep him. But you're not wrong. The kid the, goes back. Uh, but as you guys are saying this, Bok Bok ba- comes up to also contribute to the conversation. He sort of smells him and he goes, <laughs> he looks up at you guys and goes, Fresh! Fresh? Bok Bok. Bok Bok, eat. They're made... Goblin, he says to 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 Varel. Bok Bok, eat eat, fresh fresh, dead dead fresh. Oh, uh, Bok Bok, eat. Uh, metal man bits bits scraps scraps of the metal man. Bok Bok. Uh, uh, good. Poopy. I'll start Poopy. moving the kid onto the truck. We've got to go, guys. They know As you do it, uh, Bok Bok smells his leg and Bok like Bok. Tastes his skin. <laughs> You're sort of it up. No. <laughs> Brave, good fight, Bok Bok, but no. <laughs> Reward with meat, bear meat, bear meat, he, good. Mm. He, he crosses his arms and just looks down and goes, hmm. <laughs> like, Bok Bok have no fresh in three days. Three days? We let him eat meat three days ago. Where, where did he get this human three days ago? Not three days, two days. Wait, that's even sooner. Bok Bok, where are you eating people? <laughs> that camp! Bok Bok fresh! Bok Bok have fresh! We will discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Bok Bok hungry! Bok Bok like fresh! Who? No, no, no. Name. No, no, name, name. Did you. Would, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find it, Bok Bok? Mm, in in mountain, mountain. Walk mountain. Walk round mountain. Fresh. Fresh. Fresh on ground. Fresh body in the mountain, eh? Fresh on ground. Bok 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 no Bok Bok no um no bad bad. No oh, bad, already bad, dead. Man. Already dead fresh man in the ground at, at mountain. Mm-hmm. Fresh man in mountain. Ah, and magical, I turned to the group now. In magical comic. place. It was, it was a magical place. Fresh man dead in the mountain. Delicious. Good. Ah, Bok Bok has not killed. So he ate a body he found in the mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But it was already dead. Yeah, it was. How big was it? Bok, ask him how big it was. Was it uh, a big man? Sure. Uh, bok Bok. It got... Uh, he, he normal man. Uh, normal big, man. Big knee. Um, big knee? Uh, 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 not much meat meat. No meat. L- little meat thin. meat. Little meat meat. Stringy. Little meat meat. Um... Feel a little uh, after eat after eat. Ooh, 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 tell me, tell me, ache, tell me, ache mm. after eat. I was hoping. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. I was hoping it was Orp. <laughs> be a lot of meat. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd remember Orp. That'd be a journey. <laughs> Bok Bok could come back weighing yeah. about a hundred pounds <laughs> extra. I think he'd make a house out of it and just have an eating house where he'd wake up. And just eat his bed and his walls. We'd never see Bok Bok again. He'd be living like Scrooge McDuck. Mm-hmm. He, he turns his attention back to Ted now. He's like, with his tongue out. Mm-hmm. Fresh, 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 fresh pinky. <laughs> there should be plenty of fresh pinky where we go, but for now, squid and bear, Bok Bok, squid and bear. Okay. Obey King! And he takes a little bow. We must go. Yes, the direction, Varel. Can you deduce where we're off to? Do a survival check with the sun. Ooh, natural 20. What a waste, but yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you're trying to figure out uh, where exactly you are? Yeah, after the battle and the card getting flipped around, getting us back on track for the T. Yeah, so you reorient yourself in order to know which direction to move on the map. You get a sense of which way is north and west, or sorry, east and west based on the sun and based on the shadows. And um, you get a sense for north and south from 
uh, the orientation, uh, your sense of magnetic fields. Although you don't know, you don't wouldn't articulate it in that way. But you kind of feel feel the pull in the right direction, and you just know which way is which way. And you can tell Hope where to go to get to the teat, which is more, uh, southwest. All right, and as we drive and head out. Well, Stanley, would you like to drive? Keep in mind, there's also the mountain range off on the horizon, which you can see a very little bit. That sort of guides you. You know, on the north side, there's no mountain range, but on the south side, you do see the mountain range into the west. Okay. Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and keep giving it a little try until I get the hang of this. And uh, I'll keep trying to learn to drive. Okay. So if you want to learn to drive, which means maybe you become have a proficiency with the driving skill, it take a number of weeks, but you'd eventually get that practice and become could become skilled with it. If we want to do some training, that's up to you guys, though. But yeah, it's gonna I take figure. A number. Hope and I can alternate. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Back and forth on who's driving for a while. Sure. All right, and let's uh, let's move along. So, John, you're driving for now. Yeah. So let's move a hex, and let's forget a die roll. It's a d12, right? Yeah. Two. All right. Well, so I'm asleep, by more. the way. I'm sleeping in the car. <laughs> okay. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Bok Bok also, he curls up next to your feet mm -hmm. uh, like a dog and starts resting. Uh, Ted is just lying there. I assume he's on the couch. Um, yeah. And the, su the, su the sun begins, as you guys drive for those two hours, the sun begins to go down now. Because you, you drove eight hours before, then drove another two, then it's 12. So it's starting to become sunset. It's dusk, we'll say. Well, we continue we, on during we throughout the continue night. Continue, or should we? I would like to rest at some point. So, at some point, we should set up a camp. But we may be able to go a little further. Whatever you're feeling, Stanley. All right. We'll maybe continue another two hours and then call it. Okay. You guys could also alternate once one of you drives and one of you doesn't for sleep. Mm. Okay, so roll two more. Uh, each of you roll one, uh, one d twelve. It's a seven for me. Two. All right. Well, you continue on your way, without a vent, as uh, it turns into full night now. All right. Now I want to sleep. Cool. Okay. So you're going to continue driving through the night, or you're going to cut the engine and and make a camp of it. Um, I haven't rested at all, so we'll cut the engine and stop the car. All right. And I jump out of the car. <sighs> Start to wallow. <laughs> Wait, are you, oh, you're going to make your, your um, uh, a sand camp for yourself outside of the vehicle. Yeah, ba basically like like almost, you know, like scratching at the door, starting to get a little antsy as the sun goes down. I don't want to sleep in this thing. All right, so you go ahead and make yourself a, an outdoor camp. Um, Nash, you wake up from, <laughs> I think you've been asleep for eight hours. It's close to eight. It's a six hour part of the rest sleep, so you're fully rested. You're now at level one, or you're cleared of exhaustion. Is that clear? Cleared of exhaustion, right? Should yep. be. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, so you're cleared of exhaustion, and uh, Hope and Stanley are looking to go to bed. Bok Bok is still sleeping, and so is Tedna. So would you engage in the watch for the evening? Uh, Scott, will you will you engage oh, in, in Sorry, in I'm the watch he I'm the healing evening? my thing and I sorry they were talking about something else. <clears throat> oh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, my exhaustion now has zero and I'm back to thirty four hit points, everybody. Guess Woo! what? I'm taking first watch. Go to sleep, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nash. All right, perfect. And all your spell slots are recovered now. Um, okay, so uh, everyone starts to head to sleep. Scott, since you have first watch, uh, is anyone else taking watch or is Scott taking all the watches? It's up to you guys. Because usually a, a, a long rest is eight hours. Yeah, long rest is eight hours. Everyone, um, you sleep for six of those eight hours. Yeah, so. I mean, I can take a watch at the end of my long rest um, okay. once I'm back up. All right, Scott, uh, let's get uh, I want everyone then who's going to participate in Watch Varel, you can watch too, right? I think. Yep. For the same. Everyone roll a d12. Okay. Well, I don't know that sound of this sounds good, but all Six. right. Mm-hmm. 11, 11. Was that 10, Hope? Yeah. 
And Varel would you roll? Six. Okay. All right. So uh, Scott, during your um, during the first part of the the sleep, uh, let's see. You are you are out. Um, <clears throat> You're, where, where do you stand watch? Are you in the vehicle or are you outside? Um, I'll say I'm outside. Uh, I, I'm sitting cross-legged on the hood of the of the car, or on the roof of the car. Okay, do we even okay. have a roof, though? Hold on. There's still, still some roof left. Yeah, there's roof left. Okay, I'm, if there's room, I'm sitting up there, so I have a good vantage point. Okay, so you're standing watch over the vehicle. Um, and nothing happens for the, in the nice cool air. Everyone goes to sleep. It's very quiet. The desert's still. Except you notice some movement about an hour in to the rest. To the west side of you. Okay. And you sort of peer over and you see there are humanoid shapes moving against <clears throat> the horizon on the on the waste. They're walking appear to be walking in your direction. They also appear to have some kind of animal with them. Again, a shape you can't make out, but they don't appear to be riding them. Okay. They appear to have them by their side. Multiple you of these see animals? see that shape. Yes, you see about eight to ten different shapes against the horizon. Uh, okay. I'm surprised I can see these, given that my sight's no good at night. Or is it nighttime? Right, but the, the, there's the moon that's out. The sort of you know, there's a, there's a dull as your eyes adjust to the darkness. You can see small silhouettes against the black. Okay. You see them coming. They don't appear to be making taking the way their body language is to be taking great pains to conceal themselves as they approach. But they are approaching you, your vehicle, like your area. Do I know where? Uh, do I know where Varel is sleeping, or where his little uh, dirt nap is? Varel, where did you make? Yeah, how far on? are you from the camp? I would have jumped right out the door, and then about six feet away, just rustled on in. Okay, I'm gonna go. I would like to go over there to his little mound and tap it <laughs> and go, Varel, wake up, dude, Varel. Shake off some sand, get my head out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to do this, but I think we might have a problem. And wise to wake me, and I stand up. What? Come, come, come! Look, come over here. And I take him to where we'll have a decent vantage point on the horizon. Hu uh, people, I don't know who, and then I don't know what they've got with them there. Can you make? Can you see that any better than I can? They're coming our uh. way. 15 perception. Okay, you peer out, and they begin getting closer as well, so that helps. Um, they're definitely lizard folk. Oh. That you, you take one look at them, and you count four lizard folk standing upright, walking with purpose towards your camp. They have steeds with them. Um, definitely velociraptors. My you can't make out details. There's still dark silhouettes in the back, but you can you read them immediately as this. This is a this it's a lizard folk hunting party. They what? What does that mean for I'm, us? Are we is this bad? They likely are looking for supplies. Our vehicle does look like scrap at the moment. We should we should roust everybody slowly. And begin to meet them. If you, uh, you'd know best if they're lizard folk. I don't, I don't trust these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and so, I'll go, run into the the fate for you know, not trying to rock the whole thing with my weight and all, but you know, going, touching all all the important people awake except for the boy. <laughs> okay, and then everyone rouses. Uh, Rel, what is it? My people approach. Your people? Lizard folk. Lizard folk are here? Yes. I'm guessing because this happened during first watch, I have not benefited from long rest. No, yet. you have not benefited from long rest. Okay. But just remember your role. <laughs> if you happen to go back to sleep tonight, if that happens, then 
can preserve the rules. Okay. This will be tonight's event, so to speak. So, all right. Um, uh, as you, uh, everyone gets up, sort of puts their clothes back on, gets ready for God knows what. Uh, you you wait outside and you see the approaching figures on the horizon, and there's no light illuminating the land. So uh, it's not until they get very close that you begin to see the scale. It's hard to tell which color they are, but they look similar to Varel in that they may be bronze or they may be green. They all, every, all the lizard folk in the night moonlight look sort of a dark obsidian. And the lizard folk stop moving as uh, they notice that. You notice them and there's sort of two parties standing across an open desert area. And one of them steps forward and says, I am Diptak. I seek Varel, Rasvim, Kurek. And then I'll step forward. I am Varel, Rasvim, Kirik. What do you seek of me? I seek to challenge you for the hand of your consort, Taipala. I will train. You have transgressed the natural order of our tribe. It is I who is meant Diptak of the Golden Land. Who is, is meant- Is this common? It's draconic actually. Okay. It, who is meant to, to, to husband the great Taipala. She has no right to allow you to claim her. I give Nash a little nudge and quietly yeah, you... say to him, See, I'm not the only one that gets Actually, in trouble with the it's ladies. Dr it's draconic, What's so I speak Nash, it. You guys both so hope's the only one that doesn't understand. Yeah. I don't think I speak it. I don't yeah. speak so it. all you hear oh, is I like ah, ah, you know, you just you can't. So many draconic speakers in this party. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, so anyways, he says Oh, that. I do speak it. <laughs> we all speak it. <laughs> It's like our uh, melee only World of Warcraft time yesterday. Just a bunch the of The only way to resolve this, Vorel, the bastard, is to is for me to kill you but, in combat. Vorel, you said you didn't have any kids. But you don't understand, so you didn't say that. <laughs> no, she does speak. She does I do speak. speak it. Oh, you do speak it. Oh, I missed it. Oh my god. Okay. So my apologies, Hope. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> Your mate found you weak. Though I have not acted on her advancements, if you seek this battle, you will find it with me. Very well. Let us waste no time in determining the victor. I will crush your face. If you have any last things that you wish to say or do, now is the time. And he begins... What? Shuffling off his, look. his, he has a cloak. He shuffles it off, and he's got this spear with a giant tooth in it. And he's, just... I'm gonna look at Varel, and I'm gonna say, Varel, look at this guy. This guy's a joke compared to you. You got this. Waste him and give him inspiration. Now, uh, as he as he says, okay, all right. The other the other three men begin to shuffle off their the lizard folk. Shuffle off their their um, cloaks as well and pull out their spears. You'll be fighting all four of them. You you know that this is the way. This is the, the whole one-for-one one combat is a, a human notion. He's brought four of his animals, uh, his hunting party with him. Oh. It mm. would be up to you to have four of your own or not. Because you all right. Know. Step up next yeah. to Varel and yep. take off my leather jacket. I'll turn to you, and this is a battle of champions. If you will, I would be honored to fight by your side once again. Oh, we're all fighting. Okay, great. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Do all we right. have any weapon limitations? I got to sleep for eight hours. <laughs> no, there's the... Uh, well, I mean, wait. There are no rules to this. However, oh. there are cultural customs that either you know or you do not. So if there's anything taboo, it'd be up to Varel to form you. Oh. But as you say this, the lizard folk, dip tack grabs his spear and he says and he takes a stance and then the men behind him they take a stance too and he says let us begin and then he charges forward and that's our show oh man dip. Oh. we gotta fight dip tack lizard brawl 
Ask your doctor if dip tack is right for you. <laughs> Don't make fun of lizard folk culture. It's no, racist. I, I love the names of everybody. <laughs> so racist. Tedna is my favorite name ever there because it's like Edna with a T. I love it. Uh, Tedna. Ugh. Hey, uh, At some well point, done. He's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, he's not. Ed, not long this for this is world. Be a big character thing for hope. Not long for this world. Uh, well, all right, that leaves us there, everybody. Next week we tackle it again and see what's up with uh, there will be dungeons. We don't know. We don't know where Bo's taking us every week. We have no idea. That's what's so fun about this. So in the meantime, if you want to send us your emails and tell us stuff, uh, how you feel about the show, ideas you have, questions you have about our characters, all that kind of stuff, you're encouraged to check out therewillbedungeons.com and you'll find all of the podcast links for old episodes as well as video and the rest. It's going to do it for us this week, for me, for Kyle, for Kristen, for John, for Bo. We'll see you next week. Bye now. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. And...